Okay, here's my DIY canister filter with internal radio flow solid separator. And um, let's go ahead and deconstruct this so that you guys can see what I'm doing. I have two buckets. The first bucket is going to perform all the mechanical filtration and solid separation. The second bucket is going to store my return pump along with the biological filtration media. And uh, I will add a heater later. I don't have it now but I will add a heater later. So we look at how this works. This pipe, and actually when this is set up, this pipe will be turned towards the back of the tank, but for the time being, I have this turned sideways so you can see what's going on. The intake from the tank will come down this pipe into the bottom of the tank, and I drilled the hole at the bottom of the tank with a one quarter inch uniseal. That pipe goes towards the middle of the bucket and then there's a short stand pipe that comes up the top. So the way how that works is the water comes down, it goes across, and then up into the stand pipe. Now in that stand pipe, I've set up a, a radial flow solid separation chamber at the bottom of the bucket. So um, that's an idea that's borrowed from aquaponics and that idea for aquaponics was actually borrowed from um, waste management. So uh, we'll get into that in a little bit, but let's go ahead and deconstruct this. So the way I have, it, I have this set up is uh, I have a bulkhead fitting at the top of this bucket lid. It'll go into an elbow, across, and then down into the bottom of the next tank. And then it'll fill this tank with water, with clean water. Um, and then as it fills back up, the pump will then uh, pump straight up out of the bucket back into the tank. Okay, let's go ahead and deconstruct this. So this is the lid. I'll go ahead and take this off. Move the side. Pull this a little closer. Um, what I have here is fine mechanical filtration media. And I cut it to size with just a scissor. And I made sure to cut it in such a way that it's a little bit bigger than the diameter of the inside of the bucket. If anyone's ever worked with the mechanical filtration, we know that once it gets waterlogged, sometimes it tends to shrink. And as it shrinks, it pulls away from the edge of the canister filter, and that allows solids to come up through the sides. Okay, so that's fine. Mechanical filtration, put that aside. This is blue, medium, mechanical filtration. And finally, we have coarse mechanical filtration. So as the water comes up, the larger, as the water comes up containing the solids, um, they'll be caught through the different levels of mechanical filtration. Okay, now that we've gotten past mechanical filtration, what we have is um, a settling chamber. And so what I've done in the settling chamber is I filled it up to the point, I filled it up with uh, five 10 foot sections of three quarter inch PVC pipe cut down to size. And I think um, this was quite a chore to cut it down to size. It actually took a few hours to do while I was watching TV. But I think um, you could probably use those scrubby pads that a lot of people use. But I think that if you use the scrubby pads, they might be a little bit hard to clean out later. And I think these here will be easier to spray down to get rid of all the, uh, the muck and solid waste from the fish tank. So I use this, and this is the way I conceptualized it, so I'll just use that. So what this is, is it's a very large settling chamber that will allow for the solid waste to collect at the bottom of the tank and prevent it from, prevent as much as possible from hitting your mechanical filtration. So if you're able to do that, have a large settling chamber um, to, to capture the solid waste, it'll prolong the life of your mechanical filters. So that's good. So um, inside of this is going to be my radial flow solid separator that I've created um, to separate the uh, solids from the water. And to show you that, I'm going to have to pour this out. I'm going to pour out all these PVC pipes, so give me one moment as I do that. Okay. 
Okay, so now that I've done that, what I have here is my solid separation chamber or radial flow chamber. And uh, let me pull that off just so that you can see what I've done. All right, we'll put this aside for a bit. So again, the water comes down this pipe and then it'll go up this standpipe. And as it hits the top of the standpipe, the water will then change direction and go down or actually it'll go, it'll flow out. But the solid separation chamber, what it'll do is as the water flows outwards from the center of the sandpipe, it'll hit the sides of the inside of the solid separation chamber and fall straight down as more water comes out from the standpipe. And that's basically how radial flow works. It changes the direction of the water, the wastewater. It sends the solids down to the bottom of the of the waste tank or the canister in this case and it keeps it there and the purpose of this PVC media is so that as the water diffuses out of the bottom of the separation chamber and I've not done a very good job in cutting this but it's still going to work pretty nicely um, the PVC pipes will keep the water flow diffused and as it hit the solids hit the PVC pipe they're going to stay at the bottom of the canister. So that's the idea. So there's a couple things I need to do um, to make this work a little bit better. I didn't do my measurements too well. So as I was cutting this notch so that it fits over the standpipe, I ended up cutting the notch a little too deeply into my solid separation chamber. So I'm gonna cut off a piece of PVC and uh, patched up. I don't know if you can see that here, but uh, there's like a gap between the pipe and the notch that I cut out. And uh, I'll fix that, no big deal. And um, also because this bucket has a sloping side, the uh, pipe as it goes in, it goes in at an upward angle, therefore the standpipe doesn't come in straight. And what I need to do to make it straight is just to simply tie some sort of twine around this bucket and this pipe to pull it closer to the pipe and hopefully that'll keep it vertical and that's what we want so we want it to go up and down so i haven't tried this yet i haven't done the water test on it yet i don't know if it's gonna actually leak water or anything like that but i think it's gonna work and uh i'll go ahead and uh post the results later so one other thing that you guys need to notice is that um, when radio flow filters are created in other applications such as wastewater management or aquaponics, as the water comes out of the standpipe, um, the separation chamber is exposed to air. And as the water comes up, as it hits the air, it, the water then can no longer travel up a water column and then collapses, collapses upon itself. So in a canister filter, the benefits of having a canister filter is that it's completely sealed off. So water is not supposed to leak. So to have that um, water being exposed to air, what I've done is made sure that I got a, a cap for this solid separation chamber that has a dome top. And I'm hoping that it'll trap some air in there, which will allow that water to no longer be able to travel up the water column, hit that air, and then fall back down. Um, Due to gravity and so that's how that's going to work um, there's a couple other things I need to do um, with this and uh, it it's pretty easy but pretend this is a lid for the other one where I haven't drilled anything to it but I, I noticed that a lot of people build DIY canisters they put their pump on the outside of their canister that really ruins the life of the pump because these pumps are meant to be submerged and they'll actually function more efficiently when they're submerged. So you need to place that pump inside the canister if you're making a DIY canister filter. What people don't realize is that I think people leave it outside of the canister because there's a wire coming from the pump that they have to somehow string through the canister. That's easily solved. So, um, yeah, so that's pretty much the whole idea of this. I think it's going to work out really well. 
And I think by doing this, I solve a lot of the traditional problems that you have with canister filters. And uh, by looking at um, some of the more expensive canister filters that are out on the market, like the Fluval FX6, um, the biggest problem I noticed with that is that the mechanical filtration media is all proprietary. And there's no way that you can cut those pieces to make it um, fit because it's a curved surface. Also, what I don't like about it is that really when you think about mechanical filtration, what really matters in terms of efficiency is contact surface area. And by that I mean the contact that the water has with the surface of your of your mechanical filtration medium. With biofiltration, the concept is a little bit different because what you're looking at is for, um, in terms of surface area, we're looking at poriosity, which is gonna allow the beneficial bacteria to colonize all throughout that media in a small volume of space. Um, mechanical filtration is completely different because the solids are suspended in the water. So as the water hits the mechanical filtration, it's the contact point that the mechanical filters have with that water that really make a difference. So um, if you look inside a, a Fluval filter, as the water contacts the mechanical filters, it's contacting at a very small contact area on the mechanical filter. Here, I have a surface area of about 11 inches, 11 and a half inches across, or, or five and three quarter inches across times pi, which is gonna be my total area, of, uh, which is how you figure out the area of the circle, but um, radius times pi. But that is going to, going to improve the mechanical filtration greatly. And the key is increased contact surface area with the water on against the mechanical filter. And um, again, this is cheap. I bought this here, a huge sheet of it for about 11 bucks. Um, each one of these sheets were about 11 bucks. So I'm gonna be able to replace this every few years and uh, it's not gonna cost me all that much. And to be quite honest, the coarse and the medium filters will probably never need to be replaced because they're never gonna get clogged. I'll be able to black backwash them out pretty easily. The only one I really need to replace is the fine filter pad because it's going to be it's going to get clogged at some point and I won't be able to wash it out and reuse it but it's just one piece that I expect to probably replace maybe once a year at eleven dollars so that's not bad um, also uh, um, by having a, a second chamber that's going to have uh, that's going to store my Biological filter, I feel as if I'll be able to put more biological filter media in there. Also have room in there for a heater, which will then be stored outside of my actual tank. And it'll help with aesthetics. So that's great. And uh, if the pump ever breaks down, I can replace the pump instead of replacing the entire uh, canister filter, which is going to be kind of hard to do if you have like a proprietary system. So... By setting this up this way, I have a large settling chamber and a solid separation device, which will help in removing solids before it hits the mechanical filters. I've increased the surface area of my mechanical filters. I increase the amount of biological media I have, I can use, and I am able to put my heater into my canister filter. And um, I actually toyed with the idea of adding a third bucket, and that third bucket would just contain fine sand. And fine sand's purpose is to help in denitrification. But, um, you know, it's an idea that's borrowed from uh, the saltwater guys because canister filters are considered nitrate factories in, in a saltwater system. And a lot of saltwater guys use a refugium just so that they can uh, set up beneficial bacteria to perform such things as denitrification. And for those of you who don't know what denitrification is, there is the nitrogen cycle, which most Aquarius know about, which is to take ammonia 
into nitrite and then from nitrite into nitrate and nitrate is not as toxic to the fish as ammonia or nitrite but in a typical aquarium the water still needs to be changed out to remove the nitrate or to lower the concentration but if you use the correct biological media you can actually get denitrification which would then break up the nitrates into nitrogen compounds which are then exhausted from the tank into the atmosphere so um, toying with the idea of using a third bucket for a deep sand bed, a DSB, was to perform just denitrification. But um, I bought the uh, biohome biofiltration media from Great Wave Engineering here in the US, and I find that it's great. It does denitrification right off the bat. I've had it for less than two months, and uh, my nit uh, nitrate levels are less than 10%. Or 10 ppm so that's that's just brilliant so um, all this here none of it is any good if you don't use good bio filtration media and the best bio filtration media out in the market is the bio home stuff so big shout out to pond guru um, some of the ideas for this I borrowed liberally from him um, there's a video that he's posted out there that tells you how to pimp out your existing canister filter by using ceramic media and putting it in the bottom settling chamber. Um, I replaced that by using these PVC pipes cut to size, and that helps diffuse the flow. That's something I borrowed from him. And of course, the coarse medium fine filters, I've learned from gleaming the information from his videos, and I've adapted this radio flow solid separation chamber from everything I've learned in aquaponics. So that's pretty much it. This wasn't cheap, but I think it was a whole lot less still than uh, the uh, Fluval 6 filter, canister filter with all the media. And uh, I think it's going to perform a whole lot better. So that's that. And if you have any questions, let me know.